your home life was like. I don't care what your background was like. I don't care where you come from. You're not your past. You Amen. are now walking a new walk with him. Amen. And you've been reborn yes. with him. So you're now re-aligned, re-alive, rebirth with him. You're not the sum of your past. You're not the sum of your failures. What's God do? The righteous man falls what? How many times is that? Seven, seven times? Seven times seven? Goes on and on and on. I don't care how many times you fall, you get back up, you go on. Amen, amen. You get back up, you get on the right path, and you go on. Now, we're not supposed to stay living in our sin, not if we're called by him. There's a point. you got to stop doing the thing that pulls you down. If you can't, then you better get a hold of somebody that can help you walk that walk. You don't have a right to teach nobody else. You can't walk it yourself. All right, we're in 1 Samuel 23. I don't know what God's got for you today, <laughs> but we'll find out as we go along. <laughs> oh, God. So, we're just going to start reading the word, and uh, I suppose I'll stop. And you, you all can keep track where I'm at, okay? I heard bells. <laughs> that was my Jesus bells. Yes, they were. <laughs> who was, who was the, uh, the guy that said that when when you hear a bell ring, the angel? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ring. That was an old um, Yeah, movie. I, it was a Christmas movie, and I can't think it's of it. It's a wonderful life. It's a yeah. wonderful yeah. life. Yes, yes, yes. It is a wonderful life with Jesus. Yes, <laughs> amen. I had an interesting uh, thing happen to me. I was praying last week, and I sensed the presence of the two large angels, probably Oh, God. Up there, to however tall this ceiling is. <laughs> but anyway, God's, you know, angels are always present. Yes. They're here today. They're around you today. You know, we never think of them being right beside us, but they are. We yes, have angels yes. that guide us and lead us. We have angels that will give us a voice when we need to you know, stand up for ourselves. We have messenger angels that come and just give us, maybe wakes us up in the middle of the night with a dream or whatever. They talk to us. But anyway, I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, 1 Samuel 23. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Caleb and are um, plundering the, the threshing floors. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and deliver Caleb. Now, but David's men said to him, Behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we go to Caleb against the ranks of the Philistine? Then David inquired of the Lord once more, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise and go down to Caleb, for I will give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men arose. They went to Caleb and fought with the Philistines. And he led away their livestock and struck them with a great slaughter. Thus David delivered the inhabitants of Caleb. Now, <clears throat> David hears that the Philistines are coming against Caleb. He's like, should I go help him, Lord? David's a minister of God. Should I go help him, Lord? Is this my call? Should I do this? So he inquires of the Lord. Now, how does he inquire of the Lord? Well, he he calls for the uh, Urim and the, the Toam, or however you pronounce that, but that's of the ep, uh, Ephod that uh, the priest Evathar had brought with him. And that, the epit is something that was on the priest's breastplate. And what was thought to be inside that, that epit was a Urim and the Torah. Now, I think that that was probably two flat pieces of rock of some kind. And how, how what they used to do is they used to flip this rock or whatever. And if it landed both faces up, that meant no. But if it landed a different way, it meant yeah. Um, 
but much like us, I guess, when we flip a quarter, heads or tails, you know, we, yeah. say, we say it. But for them, it meant something different. Now, I've heard some say that there was a shininess to these rocks, that they would shine different colors. I don't know if that's true, so don't take it from me, but um, I've heard Joseph Prince say that, matter of fact, that you, you, the rock used to shine out, and it used to shine out uh, uh, that a certain color meant a certain thing. Now, I don't know, like I said, so don't take that to heart because we don't, we, we don't know. Nobody knows. But we do know that's how they used to get a yes or no from God. So the men are afraid. He tells David, go down to fight the Philistines, and the men are afraid. Have you ever been afraid to do something? Yeah. God ever called you to do something, say, <laughs> oh, has God ever called you to do something and you're like, no, God, you can't be talking. That's not right, God. That's not me. Who am I, God? I, have, I got a mouth, but that's all I got, God. I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't understand the ways of the past. I don't understand how you did this and did that. I, I don't understand. I just believe. You know what? And sometimes that's all God needs. Somebody who just believes, somebody who will just trust and somebody that will just put their whole heart in God, that he's going to do it. He's going to mark the way. Because I don't know how many times I've been going, God, <laughs> is it this way or this way? That or that? I know you're going to lead me and guide me. But how, God? Tell me how. Yes. You know, and then you go on. Without an answer, don't know. He's not giving you any kind of answer. Don't know what you're doing. Don't know how it's going to happen. Don't know this. Don't know that. And all of a sudden, here comes this other person who just says, you know what? I was thinking this. And they da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> and your mouth falls up because you know that's an answer from God. Now, come on. How many times has that happened? Or you're listening to a song on the radio. You don't know the answer. And then they just sing out the lyrics to this song. And there's your answer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, God speaks to us in so many different ways. Yes, he does. But here, oh, thank you, Lord. here God had spoken. And the men are afraid. Mm. Who's our men today? Like in leadership. I'm thinking in leadership. you got to have people behind you that aren't afraid yes. to say I was wrong. Right. you got to have people behind you that aren't afraid. To, Is God calling you to do that? Well, if you believe that's really God, I'll stand with you. I'll pray with you. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I'll even uh, be your armor bearer. Yep, yep. March the way for you. you. In leadership, you have to have good men and women behind you like that that's going to not be afraid to go where God wants to take you. Right on. Well, so he, because his men were afraid, he goes back in and inquires again from God. God, you sure? sure. They're, they're all, you know, they're afraid to go and fight against the fields. God, are you sure? You think God knows when he's sure? He's sure. <laughs> sure he does. He knows. Yes. You see, we don't always see the end of the story. Right. All we see is the situation right now we're living in. Mm -hmm. And it won't look too good out there in the world today, what mm -hmm. we're living in. It don't look too good. And I hear people say, oh, we're United States, it's a loss, you know. That God can't save us now. I want to tell you, I don't care how bad it looks. God can still save the United States if he wants to save the United States. Amen, amen. God can save this world if he wants yes, to save this yes, world. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible does tell us, down through the lines, that it's going to get bad. But I'm going to tell you something. He never said that his believers and his followers would be part of that. Amen. He never said that we were going to go in into that wrath. No. He never said that at all. No. He's going to deliver us out of it. Now, I don't know how he'll do it, but he'll do it. Yeah. He's going to hide us. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. He's going to hide us. He'll cover us with his wings. Yes, yes, yes. He's got some big ones. No. <laughs> if he could cover the whole world with his wings, I think he's got some big ones. He's got, he can, he can take it, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, another thing I hear people say all the time is that, Christians shouldn't have to suffer. Well, oh, no. that's not what my no. Bible says. No, it isn't. That's not what my Bible says. It says you'll have trials and tribulations. That's exactly right. You'll have trials and tribulations. You'll have suffering you go through. You'll have deaths. You'll have heartaches. You'll have hurts. Yeah. 
just like everybody else. But God brings you through it. Look at all the disciples that followed after Jesus Christ, the pain and the agony they went through. But here's the one thing they knew for sure, that he was God Almighty, and they were not going to deny him no matter what. Peter learned that lesson, now didn't he? Peter learned that. I denied you, Lord. Guess what? Oh, gosh. Did God say, you're down. You're going to hell now, buddy. Yeah. Did he? Grace and mercy. No, he didn't. Yeah. He delivered him. God yeah. delivered him. He gave him grace. He gave him mercy. He said, I love you, Peter. Do you love me? Even though you denied me, I love you, Peter. Which we're getting to the next part of that. Part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, thus, David delivered the inhabitants of Caleb. So David went down with his men, took them all down, about 600 men, I think. But anyway, they went down and they fought. They delivered them. So Caleb didn't have to worry no more. Now it came about when Abathar, the son of uh, Ahimelech, fled to David at Caleb, that he came down with an ephod, sorry, I got ahead of myself, in his hand, when it was told Saul that David had come to Kayla, Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand. Now right here, this is just so Saul. For he shut himself in by entering a city with double gates and bars. So Saul thinks because David has come to Kayla to deliver Kayla from the Philistines, that now that God delivered him into his hands. Why is that? Because there's no point of escape in that land. There's a way in. So Saul can now disperse his men to encircle David and trap him. He thought, he had the goal to think that God had delivered David into his hand. When God had left Saul. But he still thought God did it for him. Now that's pride. A lot of it. He knew better. He knew that Samuel had prophesied over David to be the king. He knew that uh, it was going to be David and not his son. So how could he now think that God was giving him into his hands? You suppose he had an I'm not wrong complex? It's what I say, I'm the king, I'm not wrong. Every word that comes out of my mouth is right. You know, whenever we get to that place, we think we're right about everything. There's something wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't be afraid to say, I'm wrong. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Yeah. I admit that. Because when we can't yeah. admit that, we're not humble. Yeah. Right. And it takes a humble heart to yeah. serve God. Yeah. So Saul summoned all the people for war to go down to Caleb to besiege David and his men. Now David knew that Saul was plotting evil against him. So he said to Abathar the priest, bring the ephod here. Then David said, O oh Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard for certain that Saul is seeking to come to Caleb to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Caleb surrender to me and to his hand? Will Saul come down just as your servant has heard? O oh, Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. So what was, what was God telling David? Yeah. The people of that city are going to surrender you. After you delivered them. Mm -hmm. After you saved them. After you did all this for them. They're going to turn you in. They're going to turn against you. God will warn us, let me tell you. Oh, this girl knows that. Uh -huh. God will warn you. Mm -hmm. But what do you keep loving? Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're dealing with people, you just keep loving them. And if you're in ministry of any kind, believe me, the worst people sometimes are Christians. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just keep loving, doing what God called us to do. Because, see, yeah. it's a test for you. And it's a test for them. Yes, it is. And God will be the one that determines the end. Mm. You have to trust in that. So then David said, Will the men of Caleb surrender me 
and my men into the hand of Saul, and the Lord said, they will surrender you. They will. They'll do it. And they'll turn against you. They sure will. Now then David and his men, about 600 arose and departed from Cala, and they went wherever they could go. When it was told Saul that David had escaped from Cala, he gave up in the pursuit. Now, I think in that area, there were tons of caves just all over the hillside. And it was in like this valley. So I'm not for sure if all 600 men went with David or if they kind of dispatched. I would think that they would find their own hole to hide in. <laughs> just saying. But they did go and, and hide out in these caves. Now, uh, Okay, 14. David stayed in the wilderness, in the strongholds, and remained in the hill country in the wilderness of Ziph, or Zip, or whatever. And Saul sought him every day, but God did not deliver him into his hands. I love those but gods. So yes. circle that in your Bible. Yes. But God. Yes. Okay, now... <clears throat> David was hiding out in the wilderness. He was hiding out in the, the, the caves. He was hiding out there. And, uh, and God did not deliver them into her hands. But can you imagine this? So David is going to a cave. Him and his men, they're hiding out there. They're hiding out there. They just made camp, just made coffee, just made the meal, whatever. They got rested for a night. And then they got to get up, pack up, and move on. Why? Because Saul's chasing them. They just get settled in. They got to get up and move again. Just get settled in the next place. They got to get up and move again. Do you ever feel like that sometimes? You just get settled in and oh, I got to get up and go back to work. Got to get up and go back to work. I remember when I was working 40 hours a week, that's what it seemed like. So like you just get home and get rested. got to get up and go back in. You know? Anymore. Especially if you work overtime in their 12 hour days. I mean, they get really long. And um, I imagine they got tired of that, but they kept doing it over and over. And can you imagine David's heart? Can you imagine? He was had to be discouraged a little bit, but he kept serving God. He kept doing the next right thing. He kept ministering to his men. See, God had brought them, brought those men to him, and they were men. Who were down and out, right? We learned last week. They were, or the week before, sorry. They were men who were down and out. They were men who were poor. They were men who were stressed. They didn't have financial means. They were men who were just felt like they had no home. Mm -hmm. God had brought those men to David. Mm -hmm. God seems to bring people into your lives that for you to minister to yes, in right, one yeah. way or the other. Yes, He'll bring right. the people to you if you're ready to minister to him. Yes, yes, yes. We have to be his hands today. We have to be his feet today. We have to be his mouth today. We have to be everything. Because God moves us in that way. It don't matter how much money you have or how old you are or how young you are. It don't matter uh, what kind of means you have. As long as you can minister to someone else in need. It might just be an encouraging word. And you know what? That's what we need most in this time that we're living in right now is an encouraging word for Christians not to give up, to keep going, no matter what. Yes. Be in the flame. Verse 15. Now David became aware that Saul had come out to seek his life while David was in the wilderness of Zephah-Horesh. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David at Horesh and encouraged him in God. Thus he said to him, Do not be afraid, because the hand of Saul, my father, will not find you, and you will be king over Israel, and I will be next to you. And Saul, my father, knows that also. So the two of them made a covenant before the Lord, and David stayed at Horesh while Jonathan went to his house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan comes to him. He finds him. 
I suppose he had some help along the way. Dave's over here, yeah, John. Because, you know, Jonathan and David were well-known friends. So I imagine as he went to find David, that uh, people led him to, to David, you know, that maybe some of David's men. But, um, and Jonathan encouraged him. How did he encourage him? Did he give him food and clothing and camels and stuff? How did he encourage him? With his voice. He encouraged him with his word, with the words that came out of his mouth. He encouraged him. Don't give up, David. Don't give up. Don't give up, David. My father, Saul, knows you're going to be king. He knows I'm going to be right beside you. Don't give up, David. I imagine David was feeling a little bit discouraged, but when Saul, but when, when Jonathan came and gave him those words not to give up, it encouraged him again. Because see, David could remember where God had prophesied, sent Samuel, the great prophet, to prophesy over him that he was going to be king when he was a boy. He could look back in his past and see where God had done all this. See how God had protected him along the way. Mm -hmm. Right? Really? So he recalled all that God had already done. What are we supposed to do with ourselves today when we get down and discouraged? When people start saying, yeah, them Pentecostals are all crazy. Uh. You know, I've heard that before all my life. And you know, some branches can get a little bit carried away. But I want to tell you something. The gifts are true, and yes, and amen, and they're yes, for today, yeah. and the prophets yeah. are for today. Yes. They're not, I mean, it's all true. It gives hope. Yes, yes, yes. It's insight. we got to remember the way God used to speak. If he's the same today as he is tomorrow, then he's the same as he was back then and he is today. Amen? Yeah, that means the prophets that spoke yeah. back then are still prophets today to speak. Now, I know there's a lot of craziness going on. And I know there's a lot of false stuff going on. But that doesn't mean that we still don't have some true prophets today that speak the word of God. Amen. Yeah. The enemy's always going to try to kill He's a copy. He copies. Yes. He's a copycat. Yes, yes, yes. Get in the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say what God so, says. So, lost my place again. <laughs> 19. Okay, yeah. Then Zephites came up to Saul at <clears throat> Gibeah, saying, uh, Is David not hiding with us in the strongholds at Horesh on the hill of Haklaha? which is on the south of Jesmon. Now then, O king, come down according to all the desire of your soul to do so. And our part shall be to surrender him into the king's hand. Saul said, May you be blessed of the Lord, for you have had compassion on me. <laughs> Go now, make more sure, and investigate, and see his place where his haunt is. And who has seen him? And who has seen him there? For I have, for I am told that he is very cunning. So look and learn about all the hiding places where he hides himself. And return to me with certainty. And I will go with you. And if he is in the land, I will search him out among all the thousands of Judah. Then they arose and went to Ziph before Saul. Now David and his men were in the wilderness of Mon, in the Arabah, to the south of Jesmon. When Saul and his men went to seek him, they told David. And he came down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Mon. And when Saul heard it, he pursued David in the wilderness of Mon. Saul went on one side of the mountain, David on his men on the other side of the mountain. And David was hurrying to get away from Saul, for Saul and his men were surrounding David and his men to siege him. So that's where he moves from one side to the next side, to the next side, to the next side. I mean, they're just like going around the mountain. One goes here, 
and the other goes on the other side. They're moving around. Sometimes you feel like that in your life. You just feel like you're cutting and going, cutting and going, cutting and going. It's like that for criminals, I guess, when they're running from the law. <laughs> they, they're running around from one town to the next town to the next town. But a messenger came to Saul saying, hurry and come for the Philistines have made a raid on the land. So Saul returned from pursuing David and went to meet the Philistines. Therefore, they called that place the Rock of Escape. David went up from there and stayed in the strongholds of Egedi. Now, look, God's always going to make a way of escape. Yes. He's always going to make a way of escape for his people. He's always done it for Israel, and he'll always keep, uh, keep doing it for Israel. Just like for us, his people. He's going to make a way of escape for us. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what all is going to play out to the end of the world, but I do know this, he'll make a way of escape for his people. Yes. If that means he comes back and gets us, that means he comes back and gets us. If that means that he comes and takes out the wicked first, then he takes out the wicked first. Yeah. yeah. And then reigns here on earth forever. Woo Come on. <laughs> Amen. Yes. But God's good. We serve a good God, not a bad God. Why are people so quick to judge God and say, God, why'd you allow this to happen? Well, how about... Well, devil, why'd you do that? Yes. It's yes. the devil's fault, not God's fault. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We live in a world mm -hmm. that in the airways, the enemy yes. reigns, right? Yes. Always fighting. Mm -hmm. We are the ones that live in this world that have the right to rule this world. Yes, yes, yes. Thy kingdom come. Thy you guys come. know that? Yeah. Oh. He gave us the rule of authority. Yes, yes. yes. Right? Very yeah. well. So why, why aren't we taking some of that rule of authority today? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a right to call down from heaven as is on earth. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do that? I don't hear any Christians doing that today. Ignorance sometimes. Fear. Fear. Fear? Fear? People fear God. And I don't mean fear God because they know what he can do. I mean they're afraid of God. Yeah. Oh, God's coming to get me. No. That's not our God. Our God's a loving, compassionate God. <laughs> if he can forgive Peter who denied him three times, I think he can forgive us when we mess up. Yes, yes, yes. He knows a true repentant heart. He knows a heart that's sincere when it prays a, pray, a prayer to him. He knows a sincere heart. Over one that's just saying, oh, I'm sorry. And then they're going to go out and do it yeah, again yeah, next week. Yes. Yeah. You know. There comes a point when you're tired of hearing, I'm sorry. It's time to either change, turn and walk and go the other way. Or you're taking a side. Or get saved. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Get saved. Get saved. <laughs> or get saved, Brother Richard said. What that means is, if you keep saying, I'm sorry, God, and then a few months, you're good for a couple months, and then you go out and do the same thing again, oh, I'm sorry, God, and then you go on for a few more months and go out and do the same thing again, you need to get saved, brother. Yes. You're just playing a game with God. Yes. Yep. Yep. True repentance is you turn around and you don't keep going back. Now, there's strongholds in my life, so I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. Yeah. There's, a stronghold, there's strongholds in our life where brother or sister needs to walk with you until you get over the hump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, hey, if it goes on year after year, you got a problem and it's not, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, you're playing with God. Mm -hmm. You need delivered. Mm -hmm. You need delivered of that. And uh, I don't believe our God's a God that wants to play around. That's no. right. I know. Serious. He's serious yes, to yes, the yes. point. Mm -hmm. We can't ever outgive God. We can't ever outpraise God. Mm -hmm. I don't care what we do, it's not going to be good enough for God because God's God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can go out on a beautiful summery night, look up, 
out and, and see all those stars mm -hmm. and to think he created each and every one of those. My goodness. What a good, good God. My goodness. Mm -hmm. He's an awesome God. Yeah. He loves you. He knows where you're at. He knows what situation you're going through. He knows. He knows your heart when you doubt yourself. You really love me, God? Look at, look at the mess I've made in my life. Look, at, I failed so many times. He's saying, son, I love you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Daughter, I love you. Mm -hmm. Quit being so hard on yourself. You know? Did he say, Peter, Peter, Peter? Peter, 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 you denied me three times. I told you so, Peter. I told you so, Peter. Did God say that? No. Do you love me? Do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. Two times. Three then times. Then God said, do you love me? Do you love me? Uh -huh. And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, do you love me? Do you love me again? God, you know everything you know, my heart. You know I love you. Then feed my sheep. sheep. Thank you, yes. Lord. Yes. Feed yes. my lambs. Yes, yes, yes. Rise up. He wanted him to rise up and go out and minister to people. He wanted him to speak the gospel. He wanted him to tell others about him. He wanted him to preach the word. Shame on us today when we don't, when we think, I can't do that, God, I, who am I, you know? I don't know enough about the Bible. I'd have to go to school for four years, get my master's degree, and then, then there's this theologian and that theologian and that scholar. And this, which one am I supposed to listen to, God? You know, and don't accept you unless you have a degree yeah. over your desk, and that's true for today. Yeah. A lot of pastors will not accept you if you don't, if you don't have those degrees. If you go and want to uh, uh, fill out an application to be a Baptist minister, they won't accept you unless you went to a Baptist college. Right, right, right. Or you went to a Lutheran college. Or you went to a Catholic college. Or you went to a Pentecostal uh, college. Or every denomination has its own college. rules yeah. that you have to go by. So if I had been a minister, been a minister for 10 years now, if I wanted to go to a Baptist and pray, well, they wouldn't accept me anyway. Right? <laughs> Woman, which Woman. in Genesis, let me tell you, it says God created man and, and, woman. and woman. Them he created. Hello. I don't know why they have a problem with that. Well, anyway. You know, Methodist, let's just say, I wanted to go to Methodist. I'd have to go to their college. You know, they'll accept certain certain things, but not... Yeah, but I'm a God's college. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Come Holy like Spirit. Wisdom, or you like wisdom, ask of God. Ask of God. All wisdom. Amen. That's so, right. These people that teach you this stuff, if they don't know God, they can't teach you anything anyway. Right. Well, a lot of them do know God. And you learn a lot of good things in college. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that they're no good. Because I did learn a lot of good things. And, and I do hold a bachelor's. But I chose a non-denominational school to go to because of that problem right there. I didn't want to be divided. I just wanted to learn, you know, the Bible, his word. And the reason I'm verse by verse, I go that route for a reason. You know, I don't want to get off on, I don't want to take this scripture over here, spring over here in Revelation. I don't believe that's how God wrote the book, because the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. I don't believe that's how he wrote the Bible, and I don't believe that's how it's supposed to be preached. I'm sorry, that's just how I feel. If I had to go to another church today, I'd probably drive an hour to go to a verse by verse church, just to how I am. That's what God put in me. That's what I am. I don't know of another one around except for an hour away. And that's how I learned was going verse by verse, digging here, digging there, going over here, reading here, reading there, finding out the history and all that, mm -hmm. finding out what man said, then praying, finding out what God said, then, you know, seeking him out for truth. And if God doesn't reveal it to me, it's not revealed. Mm -hmm. There's still wars 
over the rapture. There's still wars over men and women preaching. There's still wars over all, you know, this theologian says that. This theologian says that. That doctor of a PhD says this. The bishop, whatever, says that. Who's right? The Holy Spirit's right. Yes. And I think when he reveals it, it will be revealed. But that's only when he reveals it. Yeah. Then this theologian will know, and that theologian will know, this scholar will know, and that bishop, whatever, will know. Because right now, none of them know. Mm -hmm. Same as me, same as a lot of ministers. You can't say 100% for sure unless God's revealed it on the land. But we're coming to a time in our place, in this land, mm -hmm. where it is going to be revealed. Yes, yes, where it yes. is going to pour out. Where the Holy Spirit's going to hit. And it's going to be Baptist. It's going to be Lutheran. It's going to be Catholic. It's going to be Pentecostals. It's going to be everybody. Yep, yep, yep. Because the Spirit's going to pour out. That's one. Yes, and yes, he's yes. going to bring revelation. And that revelation is going to awaken a lot of people. Yes, yes, yes. And those feel-good Christians that don't go to church on Sunday but mail in their tithe. Are going to get a huge awakening. Mm -hmm. I do know places like that, and I think it's awfully sad. Mm -hmm. But I do understand we live in a. I do understand. I understood that better last year when the COVID was going on. I understood it. Because I can't see where something like that would happen and we wouldn't be able to come together, then we'd have to do that. To keep God's house open. Because otherwise, what would happen? The church doors would close, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Gee, then who would win? Yeah. Gotta have hope to cope. Can you think? I mean, just think about that for a minute, what I said. The church doors would close because people, if they didn't come, they didn't send in their tithe or whatever, church stores would close. Now, a lot of people who don't come won't send in their tithe. That's just, that's just life. That's just human. I'm not pointing a finger. Nothing like that. Please don't take that the wrong way. What I'm saying is, if they're not here, they don't feel like they need to send their tithe in. So it's just the way we humans think. But now, if that happens and everybody does that, then the church stores will close and the church will lock the doors. Who's won? Satan won. Yeah. Satan won. Mm -hmm. Right? You think he's back there going, Yeah, 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 I knew I'd get them Christians. Uh-huh, send out this illness in the world. Yeah, I got them. Now that the church doors are closed, now they're going to lose hope. Yeah. Now they're not going to follow God anymore because they're going to be crying out, Why'd you do this to us, God? Why'd you do this to us, God? It wasn't God to begin with. It was not. It was, it was Satan. Yes. We in the church world need to wise up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It was Satan. Yeah. We can't let him win. Yeah. Right? I don't care if you have to come to church and wear a mask. Wear a mask if you don't feel safe. Wear a mask. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Amen? Thank you. Do you want to see wear a mask? See wear a mask. I don't care. Right. Don't let him win. Don't let him keep you out the doors. Don't, don't let him keep you out of the doors. Don't let him keep you from your responsibility to be a Christian. Don't let him keep you from doing what's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's been a lot of churches close the doors because mm -hmm. they just, you know, they were bigger churches and, and they... You know, they, they needed the money. I mean, a lot of churches closed the doors. A lot of little churches closed the doors. We've been really blessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we've got to keep going. But I do understand that, you know, uh, there'll come a time in this world where we probably will go back to the home churches mm -hmm. because it will get bad. It will get worse. But, you know what? God's not done. We don't know the plan yet. But I do know we have a hope and a future. 
Yes. And if we give in to Satan, then we're just giving him the okay, go ahead, beat us up, throw us in the ditch. Uh -huh. If I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out with a fight. Amen, sister. Amen. I'm going to go out with a fight. Preaching the Word of God, yes. singing the Word of God, yes. and telling others about the Word of God. Yes. I'm going to go out yes. preaching Jesus Christ crucified. Yes. And the cross that He went to is the cross that every one of us needs to bear. Yes. He sent us to go out into the world, make disciples. Yes. Make disciples. That's, that's a lot more than people think it is. Yes. Yes. Making a disciple is a lot more than people think it is. It's teaching them how to apply the word of God to their life. Yes, yes. To not fall back in that same old sin over and over again. Amen? Amen. Well, the next five minutes. Any, any questions? Any comments? Anything anybody wants to say? You know when you were talking about <clears throat> Saul pursuing David all the time? Yeah. He had to hide and, and uh, he had strongholds to go to. Well, see, that's the way Satan is with us. He bothers us every day of the world. Yeah. He, he don't leave us alone. Uh -uh. Oh, and the only stronghold we got is what? The church. The church, the faith. And if we don't get in that stronghold, yeah. then we're going to We're not protected. Hallelujah. Black in Satan's eye every mm -hmm. day. Get out there and go to church, spread his word. Amen. There's strength in numbers. That's why we come together. Amen. 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 Strength Amen. From others that sometimes we don't have yeah. in ourselves. When yeah. when Ron was in the hospital and and he was fighting, I was fighting too, but I wasn't fighting alone. Yeah, I had yeah. my yeah. brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in Christ and I called for yes, prayer. Yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. there's no greater strength than than our brothers and sisters praying for us. Yes, amen. amen. And when, when we know not what to pray, our brothers and sisters are praying for us and they're yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank yes, you, Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. yes, you know, and if yeah. anybody ever needs prayer for anything like that, I mean, I know you're you're always welcome to call me on the phone, but you can text me too, and then I'll text out a, a prayer request to everybody I know, and they'll be praying. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We have that prayer line. If you let us know. <laughs> yes, we have people praying in Florida and in, in Kentucky and um, mm -hmm. what a mighty God yes, he is. So they, yes, yes, yes. Amen. That he connects us. Thank yes. you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Yeah, they called me in the hospital. There are four of them from Florida and Kentucky. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Northern Indiana. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Pray for me on the phone. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. That's awesome. That's awesome. God is good. Yeah. All the time. And you are a walking witness today. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Walking Testimony. Witness. God is good. God's Amen. done a lot in my life. Amen. I know he's done a lot in your life, too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody else? Someone? Okay. I just, I, I just, uh, I just want to share that this, this morning, I got a, a text from somebody in Florida, and um, she's my spiritual mother, and her, her encouragement to me was that when we're going through something, and she didn't know what we were going through, but when she, but when she texted me, she told me, to, reminded me that I'm hidden in Christ with God. And uh, I needed to hear that this morning. I really did. Mm -hmm. And then you brought this scripture about David hiding in the caves. Hiding, in, the caves. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. hiding in God's secret place. The rock of the And sea. we just don't realize it's the same Holy Spirit that was telling her to remind me of that. Yes. That was also telling Pastor Roxanne to preach that word. Mm -hmm. The word hidden. In that yes. cave, in, in Christ, with God. And um, we are, amen. We need to be reminded of that. Mm -hmm. Nothing can touch us because God has us hidden. We are anointed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God is good. 
covered by his blood. Thank you. And we love him today. Well, let's, let's close in prayer, and then we'll have a great meal. <laughs> Father God, oh, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here today. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us. Lord, in our sufferings, we thank you that you keep us close and you deliver us. We thank you that you hide us when those times need to be. We thank you, God, for everything, Lord, and we just praise your wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.